Okay, so welcome back. Today we're going to talk about C Sharp Visual Studio Windows Forms application Data Grid View Control. And what is a Data Grid View Control? Well, basically it's like adding a spreadsheet into your C Sharp application. We've done a couple of videos previously about Data Grid View Controls. Uh, we talked about how you can, for example, use a very nice NuGet package called CSV Reader that will take a CSV file and automatically map it as a spreadsheet into your data grid view. Uh, and then we talked about more recently, we did a video talking about the details of the data grid view and setting up columns and headers and rows and fonts and auto sizing and all of those things. What we're going to talk about in this video is how to start building a class that will automatically configure your data grid view for you and set up all of the different properties, column headers and fonts and colors and everything else. And also it will contain some code to automatically read in whatever data you want to map to that data grid view. And it will do all that in the background in a very nice class. And here is an application we're going to use to, to show how that works. Basically, I've got my C Sharp Visual Studio Windows Forms application. I've got a, a data grid view control here in the middle and a couple buttons. And the one button is just add data. Let me show you what that's going to do. We're going to set add data. It's going to open an open file dialog. And we're going to select a CSV file. And when I hit open, it will automatically map the contents of that CSV file to an existing data grid view control. And it's going to tell us how many rows we loaded, uh, how many lines were ignored because of the, not the right format. And then we can go again and read another one. And here we've got some column headers with a time header name and a value and all of these values in the file. It's basically just mapping that file to the um, data grid view. We do another one. And here we've got multiple headers. And basically it's taking this file you see here, CSV file, with some headers on the first line and then some date times and a couple numbers separated by commas and it's generating this. So what this class is going to do is it's going to automatically format this so as you stretch the data grid view control it will automatically resize, rescale those columns. It will set up the font, it will set up the font size and whatever else you want. So let's take a look at our application and see how we can set this up. So here is our C Sharp Visual Studio Windows Forms application. Again, I just drag and dropped a data grid view control and two buttons. And if you click on those buttons, you'll get the event handlers. And I've got two classes in here. The first one is a CSV reader, which does the work of throwing up an open file dialog and then getting the user specified CSV file and then parsing it. So um, we won't go into this in detail. We've talked about it many times before. CSV reader class. It's got the initial directory as a string, the file name, um, also some booleans to detect whether uh, it's read or parsed it incorrectly. And then file lines list, the list of string of all of the lines read in from the CSV file. And here's our constructor. All it does is it you feed the constructor the initial directory and it goes through and does the open file dialog and instantiates a new list of file lines. And it's only got one method in here, which is read file. And it does the basic open file dialog, filtering the CSV files or text files, instantiate a file lines list. And uh, if the dialog result is okay, it does a file.read all lines with that file name that you sent in converts that to a list and returns that. So very straightforward. The other class we have is the class we're going to talk about, which is this data grid view. I call it data grid view spreadsheet class. And here's that class. We'll talk about that. And this is what does all the work. We've got a constructor here and we've got some methods. And this is what's going to call the CSV reader, read in the data, and then send it to the data grid view. And here is our main form one. I've got, as normal, I've got some documents to do. And then I've got some properties. And we've got a public string initial directory. And this is just the directory I want to start grabbing the files from. 
and I am instantiating our data grid view spreadsheet class DGV and then I have a public public bool file load error equals false. As a matter of fact, I don't think we need that, but um, we've got some methods that I'm not using, so we'll just ignore those methods. And then the event handlers. Of course, we've got two buttons, the add button to add a file, and then the exit button. And then we've got another uh, event handler for, as we talked about before, if you want to automatically size the rows, the height of each row, you have this event handler as you change the size of the data grid view control, it will generate this event and it will go through and recalculate the rows. We won't talk about that right now. But basically, the button add method is what does the work and it goes through and it will instantiate a data grid view spreadsheet class and a CSV reader and read all the data and send it to this data grid view spreadsheet class and convert it to a data table. We'll talk about that. And then populate the data table and you'll see that in the form. So first let's go to the data grid view spreadsheet, which is the core of what we're going to be talking about. Here I've got a, our class data grid view spreadsheet with a constructor. And the constructor you feed in the data grid view control. You pass it this control and you also pass it some information about does this data that's coming in, does it have headers or not? Also, do I want it to auto size the columns and do I want it to auto size the rows and what font size and integer do I want size 16 or size 12? And again, you can add to this, but this is the basic structure of a constructor when you just feed it what you want and it will configure the data grid view control. And here we've got some code to go through and do all of that. And we also have one method. And again, you can add to this. And all this is going to do is take our CSV list that we get from loading that CSV file. We're going to convert that to a data table. So we feed it the list of lines from the CSV file, list of string lines, and it will convert that to a data table. And as we talked about previously, your data grid view control will generally need a data table associated with it, which is where you put all the data. And then all you do once you've got that data table all configured, you just set that as the source of the data grid view and it will automatically map it. Now, again, you can add a bunch of methods here. The only thing this is going to do is take a CSV file and convert it to a data table and put it in the data grid view. Uh, you can do all different types of data coming in, but this is just one example. So the way this constructor works, um, we've got some fields where we are specifying a data grid view control. We're going to call it DGV, and that's what's going to be coming in. A data table, which we need for the data grid view. And also we're going to initialize the headers Boolean saying we don't want headers, we don't want auto-sized columns, we don't want to auto-size the rows, uh, there's no file load error, we're going to default to a font size of 12, and then we have an integer which tells us how many lines from the CSV file were ignored because they're of the incorrect format. So those are the fields, and we're going to get data in the constructor, and we're going to populate those fields with this incoming data. So we've got the data grid view control coming in. We're going to call it DGV in, the bool headers, auto size columns, and so on. So here we're just going to define these input values as the fields we have up here. So we're going to say this.dgv is the DGV in, and so on. And then we're going to define a data font, which is a system drawing dot font. We're going to call it data font. And we're going to assume that they want consolus and we're going to use whatever font size came in. And then we're going to set the default cell style dot font is this data font. Again, we talked about this in detail in the previous video on data grid view. Uh, also, if headers equals false, then we're going to say the headers, column headers visible equals false and row headers visible equals false. Otherwise, we're going to set them both to true. Uh, if we want to auto size the columns, we're going to say DGV auto size columns mode equals data grid view auto size columns mode. We're going to choose dot fill 
And what that does is, here's our data grid view. It will take whatever columns you put in. So for example, if you only have two columns, it will stretch those columns to completely fill the width of this data grid view. You can choose other ways to do this, but this is just an example. Otherwise, we will say data grid view auto size columns mode dot none. If we want to auto size rows, we talked previously about this. It's not as easy. You have to use this code to basically calculate the height of the rows that you want. And then when you do this data grid view size changed event handler, it's going to go through and it's going to calculate a new row dot height. Again, I encourage you to look at the previous video to show you the mechanics of how we do that. Otherwise, we say data grid view auto size rows mode is all cells. And then once we've got everything configured, we're going to instantiate a new data table that will be assigned to the data grid view and actually fill it out. And then here is the convert the input CSV list to data table and you feed it the CSV list. So I've got a string array of line values. And then I'm going to assume that we have at least two columns in the data grid view table. So I'm going to start by adding two columns since we assume the table will have at least two. So for int i equals zero to two, uh, table.columns add. So it's going to add two columns. And then the data type is type of string. So we're going to define each column as string values. And then what we're going to do, we've got this CSV list coming in and we're going to step through each line and parse it into a string. So for each line in the CSV list, we're going to do a line vals CSV list I dot split with a comma. We're going to assume that comma separated values. So now we've got line vals, you know, if we've got three values on each line separated by commas, we're going to have three line vals for each line. Um, if the line doesn't contain a comment and has at least one element, then continue processing. So if line val zero dot starts with forward slash, if that's false, which means it's not a commented line, and line vals dot length is greater than or equal to one, then we're going to process it. So if the input array has more elements than the table, the table presently has columns, add more columns. So we're going to take the input column count is line vals dot length, and then input table column count is table columns dot count. And if input column dot count is greater than table column dot count, then we have to add more columns. So for j equals zero, j is less than input column count minus table column count. What's the difference? It's going to add a column depending on how many are missing. And then we can now add and populate the rows representing each double array in the list, then add each new row to the data table. So we're going to define a new row called data row is table.new row. So we're going to populate that new row with the double values. So for int j equals zero, j is less than line vals dot length. We're going to set the value of the j cell in the present row Note the row index does not refer to the row number, but rather the cell in that row. So row j equals line vals j. So now we've got the row vals and we will add that to the table dot rows. And now we've populated that. If we can't do that, we'll say file load error equals true. So if it's a commented line or a not right format line, it's going to increment the lines ignored. And then it's going to we'll be able to print that out. So really, this is one method of reading in a CSV list and populating your data grid table with that data. So here in the button add click event, which does the work, uh, we're going to say we're going to we're going to instantiate a new DGV spreadsheet called DGV, and we're going to feed it the data grid view control. We're going to say that the headers is false. In other words, it has no headers. Uh, we want it to auto size the columns. That's true. Uh, auto size rows is false and the font size is 16. And then we instantiate a new CSV reader using that initial directory and it will go through and do the open file dialog. And then we're going to call that CSV reader class object, call its read file method, 
get the list of string, which is all the lines in the file. And then we're going to call the data grid view convert CSV list to data table using that list of uh, lines in the file. And once we've got that, we can now say, okay, the table defined in the data grid view object is all ready, and we can assign that as the data source for data grid view one dot data source is data grid view dot table. And if there is a file load error, we can put in the label, we've got a file load error, and then we set that back to false for the next time. Otherwise, we will put in another label, here's how many rows we loaded, dgv.table.rows.count to string, and then how many lines were ignored, we have that lines ignored integer that we were incrementing, if there were any, and we just put that out. So that's basically it. That's a, that should get you going on a general concept for a data grid view class. And again, you can add a lot to it. So that's it for this one. If you like any of these videos, I encourage you to hit the like button, subscribe, hit the bell notifications. But most of all, please let others know that we're here so we get some views. Really appreciate it. Otherwise, take care. Have a really good day. Thanks.